Good morning, everyone. I'm Misty Giovanni, student success teacher, and I'm here to present to you some information regarding the OSSLT, the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test. Uh, you will be writing the test next week, and we have provided some information for you, some frequently asked questions. So here we go. So what is the OSSLT? The OSSLT is the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test. It is a ministry mandated assessment that tests reading and writing skills. So this is something that the government has asked us to do. This is not something that the school has asked or the board has asked. This is a government mandated assessment and it is a graduation requirement. When are you writing the test? Well, the test is taking place between October 25th and 29th. So we have uh, a window in which to write the test, not like previous years where everyone wrote on the same day. You will be assigned one of those days to complete the test. Uh, online students will also have an opportunity to, co to complete the test on a separate day and they will be receiving an email notification. Actually, they should have received an email notification in which um, you will have to state whether or not you will be coming in to write the test on the last day. So where are you writing the test? Well, you'll, we will be using your period one classrooms and the library. So those are the, the main locations. Locations are posted on the grade 11 LMS page and your teachers will also know and they'll be able to tell you as well. How long is the test? Well, the test is comprised of two different sessions. Each session is 60 minutes long with a 15 minute break in between each session. This is unlike previous years where they were 75 minutes long per session. So it's actually shorter than in previous years. So that's a good thing. So what is the format of the test? This is where there are lots of differences from previous years. This time the literacy test is fully online and you will be using school computers and netbooks to complete the test. You will log into the test using your OEN number and a special login code. Your OEN number is found in my path. Uh, we will also be providing it for you so you don't get mixed up on the day of the test or in case you forget it. So in terms of the format of the test, you will have, there's an introductory session. It's like a minds on, it's very, very brief. Just get, getting you into the whole um, theme of the test. Then you will have session A, which is 60 minutes as stated previously. Then you have a 15 minute break. Then you have session B, which is 60 minutes as well. And at the end, there is a questionnaire that uh, you will need to complete, just uh, a questionnaire about your reading skill, your reading habits, writing habits, etc. Just some more information about the format of the test. So session A, you will have, as, as you can see here, there's a lot of multiple choice and just a little bit of actual writing. Session A has a real life narrative, so that's a story based on somebody's real experiences, and that's seven multiple choice questions uh, which follow. You have an information paragraph with six multiple choice questions. You will have a news report. So previous years you had to write a news report. This time you do not. This time you will have to read an actual news report, and there are five multiple choice questions and one open response. An open response question is basically a short answer question of about 100 words. So that's about a paragraph. It's, it's not that long. So after your break, you would have session B. So session B is a dialogue. So that's a conversation between people. And, that, and there are five multiple choice questions which follow. There are, there's also a section on re writing and editing skills. So it will give you some sentences and it will ask you to correct the, the sentences find the errors, uh, taking a look at what would make more sense in terms of a, a paragraph, etc. Then you have the opinion piece, which is the long writing response. So you will be asked a question based on most of the questions, I've been doing this for a long time, longer than I care to admit, and all of the questions on the opinion piece in all the years that we've been uh, running the literacy test have to do with your own student experiences. So some of the previous questions uh, it were things like, should students take phys ed every year? Should students be entitled to, or sh should students have to participate in extracurricular activities? 
Should students have a part-time job? So all the questions on the opinion piece and, and all the years that we've been doing this have to do with student experiences. So it shouldn't be too hard for you to come up with um, three paragraphs and an introductory and closing paragraph. So I, I do want to focus a little bit more on the opinion piece in the next day or two. Um, maybe I'll come on again and give you some more information about that. So is the test difficult? Well, from what we are seeing um, based on other schools that have written so far this year in our board, most of this feedback has been quite positive from the students. Please keep in mind, if you are nervous about this test, this test is based on the expectations from the grade 9 curriculum. And you're in grade 11 right now, so I hope that assures you a little bit um, as to the content of this test. It is based on the grade 9 curriculum. So all of you have done some grade 9 courses and, and beyond. This test is normally for grade 10 students. Um, it was uh, you know, delayed from last year. So you, I think you will be more than prepared for this test. So what if you run out of time? So the test is designed to give students ample time to complete all sections. Students with an IEP and an ELL designation, English language learners, are entitled to accommodations. And in fact, additional time will be provided to anybody who needs it. So don't feel rushed. You will have additional time if you need it based on uh, previous students who have, have recently written in other schools in our board. Most students have reported that there is ample time, there's plenty of time to complete the sections within the 60 minute time frame. But if you need extra time, it is available for you. And like I said, if you have an IEP or an ELL designation, you are entitled to the accommodations as well. Are there any special features on the test that I can use for help? Yes. There are so many different tools on this test that you can use to assist you and to, to, act, to act as accommodations for you. There is a listening function. So you would have to bring your own headphones for that. We have a limited number available, but you would have to bring your own. You cannot use um, AirPods for this. They would have to be an actual auxiliary jack, like the ones that plug in. Um, those types of headphones. And you can actually listen to the materials that you are reading. There's a zoom function, you can zoom in and out. There's a line reader, which basically highlights the line that you're reading and you can trace that down with you as you're reading something. It has high contrast mode to help um, highlight what you are reading as well. When you are writing, there's a text box with a word count, so it'll tell you, if you have to write 100 words, it will tell you you're at 90 words, 95 words, etc. And you can go a little bit over. It does allow you to go a little bit over the word count that is expected. There's split screen mode, and I strongly recommend that everyone uses split screen mode. It's called, on the actual test, it's called open close reading packet passage. So basically what it does is it shows the reading passage on one side of the screen and the actual questions on the other side of the screen. So you have the full picture of what you're looking at and you can revert easily back to the questions. And it also has annotation tools. So there's a highlighter, you can circle things, etc. So there are lots and lots of tools. There's a progress bar so you can see how far you've gone on the test. There's a rough note section. You can even flag a question so you can return to it later. So if you encounter a question you're not quite sure of, you can flag it and then later on when you're checking your answers before you submit, you can go back to that and complete the question at that time. So what happens if you fail the test? Again, I want to assure you I have never, ever, ever seen anyone not graduate as a result of the literacy test. There are so many safeguards in place to ensure that it does not impede on your graduation. Okay? Um, you may, you will have, you will likely have an opportunity to retake the test in the spring if you wish. You should also enroll, since you are in grade 11 and you'll be graduating next year hopefully, um, you should enroll in the OLC course to complete the literacy requirement for graduation. So if you fail the test, you can complete the OLC course and the OLC course counts as your literacy requirement. So when will you get your results? So these results, we do not mark these tests. 
they are marked, they are sent, well, they're going to be sent electronically uh, to EQAO, which is based in Toronto. And previously, when we had the written tests, it would take a couple of months at least for the results to come in. Uh, there is another, the grade 10s will be writing in the spring, so we should hopefully have the results in a couple of months. I can't really uh, give you exact information on that at the time, but we will keep you informed. So what can you do to prepare? Your best resource is the OSS LT prep site on LMS. Every student in the whole school has access to that. So you would go on the, waf on the waffle on LMS, you would type in, type in OSS LT prep, and you should be able to open it. It is available for all students. It contains tips, videos, and the practice test from EQAO that is modeled on the real test. I strongly, strongly recommend that you look at the OSSLT prep site. There are activities, and it marks the multiple choice for you. It gives you lots of tips. There are little videos. And I also strongly recommend that you do the practice test. So at the bottom of the home page, you will see on the right-hand side, uh, at the bottom, a, uh, a link for the practice test directly from EQAO. On that practice test, it looks exactly like the real test. So you'll be able to take a look at the format. You'll be able to practice using some of the tools that are available for you. So that is something that um, we strongly recommend um, that you use and that you consult beforehand to help you prepare for this test. So who do you ask if you have questions? There's lots of support here and lots of people that you can ask. You can ask your guidance counselor, Mr. Bozzo, uh, you can ask me, Ms. Di Giovanni, Ms. Gillia in guidance, who is uh, one of our literacy chairs. You can ask Ms. Danielowitz, our ELL student success teacher, Ms. Walters from the resource department, and Mr. Juba, who is the VP that is assisting us as well. So there's lots of support available for you for this test. Okay, so I hope that answers some of your questions. A uh, shout out and thanks to the prefects who submitted a lot of these questions to help me prepare this presentation. And if you have any questions, please come see us. We are here to help you. Please make sure you check where you, when you are writing and be prepared. Thanks very much.